December 17th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Proverbs chapter 17 from the Old Testament. Better is a dry crust of bread where there is quietness than a house full of feasting with strife. A servant who acts wisely will rule over an heir who behaves shamefully and will share the inheritance along with the relatives. The crucible is for refining silver and the furnace is for gold. Likewise, the Lord tests hearts. One who acts wickedly pays attention to evil counsel. A liar listens to a malicious tongue. The one who mocks the poor insults his creator. Whoever rejoices over disaster will not go unpunished. Grandchildren are like a crown to the elderly and the glory of children is their parents. Excessive speech is not becoming for a fool. How much less are lies for a ruler? A bribe works like a charm for the one who offers it. In whatever he does, he succeeds. The one who forgives an offense seeks love, but whoever repeats a matter separates close friends. A rebuke makes a greater impression on a discerning person than a hundred blows on a fool. An evil person seeks only rebellion, and so a cruel messenger will be sent against him. It is better for a person to meet a mother bear being robbed of her cubs than to encounter a fool in his folly. As for the one who repays evil for good, evil will not leave his house. Starting a quarrel is like letting out water stop it before the strife breaks out. The one who acquits the guilty and the one who condemns the innocent, both of them are an abomination to the Lord. Of what use is money in the hand of a fool, since he has no intention of acquiring wisdom? A friend loves at all times, and a relative is born to help in adversity. The one who lacks wisdom strikes hands in pledge and puts up financial security for his neighbor. The one who loves a quarrel loves transgression. Whoever builds his gate high seeks destruction. The one who has a perverse heart does not find good and the one who is deceitful in speech falls into trouble. Whoever brings a fool into the world does so to his grief, and the father of a fool has no joy. A cheerful heart brings good healing, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. A wicked person receives a bribe secretly to pervert the ways of justice. Wisdom is directly in front of the discerning person, but the eyes of a fool run to the ends of the earth. A foolish child is a grief to his father and bitterness to the mother who bore him. It is terrible to punish a righteous person and to flog honorable men is wrong. The truly wise person restrains his words and the one who stays calm is discerning. Even a fool who remains silent is considered wise and the one who holds his tongue is deemed discerning. God, in Proverbs, you have a lot of the Proverbs that talk about malicious talk and referring a lot of times to gossip of talking about others. And this one is a is a hard one, I think. I think it's a hard one for people to remember. I mean, out and out, obvious gossiping. I would hope for the most part, most people would realize and acknowledge what that is and, and work to remove it from their life. But I think there's a lot of times this kind of gray area gossiping where it's still gossiping, but because it seems more like our day-to-day vernacular, we may not see it as that way. And so in verse four, you say, one who acts wickedly pays attention to evil counsel. A liar listens to a malicious tongue. And in this case, it's talking about not only gossiping, but also being the one who's listening to it, listening to it and not stopping it, listening to it and not doing anything about it. I try really hard, I don't always succeed, but I try really hard that if the person is not part of that conversation, meaning they're not physically there with me, um, I really stop and think about what it is I'm saying. Uh, Would that person, would I be able to say that same thing in front of the other person? Uh, Because if not, then it's definitely gossip without question. Uh, I should go to my fellow brother or sister in Christ and talk to them personally about this uh, instead of talking to another person about it. And I think this act unto itself gossip causes so many problems besides the initial gossiping the initial malicious part of it 
Uh, it can ruin marriages uh, by having people confide in somebody outside of their marriage. Uh, it can break up friendship because of the illusion of what was said uh, and the harm that was done when it got back to the original person. Uh, it can also cause mistrust. So if you have a friend who gossips about other people, then there's a good chance they're gossiping about you as well. And so there's that, that trust level that seems to evaporate. Uh, but on the flip side of that, um, where I think a lot of us struggle with God, and, and I'm definitely asking for your strength and helping us see this, is stopping the gossip of being able to say to a friend, even though we are obviously concerned about hurting their feelings, but being able to say to them, oh, I don't want to have this conversation because it's gossip. And that's a real struggle because if, if we're friends, they should be able to hear that from us and understand, again, it's coming from a place of love because it's what you don't want us to do. And so we're trying to carry on that message. But a lot of times we know that our friends, if we said that, would be personally offended. They would be insulted by it and act out accordingly. So God, I, I ask for strength today. I ask for the right discernment and the right words in that discernment to say to our friends who start a conversation about somebody else. Uh, and it can be something innocuous as, uh, oh, what did so-and-so say about me not showing up in the meeting or something like that. As long as you're talking about a person who's not there, we should all right off the bat check in with our hearts and make sure that it is not any level of gossip whatsoever. And then part two, allow us to find those words that we need to say to that person to stop that conversation. Whether it's, I don't want to have this conversation at this time, or I believe that we shouldn't be talking about this person unless they're here with us. God, I know that you'll give us the right words if, if our heart is set right at intentionally following uh, your commands that you've given us in the Bible. Allow us to be more in fear and in awe of pleasing you than we are in fear of pleasing our friends. And what will they think or what will they say to us if we try and stop this conversation? We are all in situations where we are either the gossipers or we've been gossiped to and in both situations god help provide us the strength and the desire to do what pleases you to use our words for good to use our words to uplift to help to use our words to uh, love other people instead of doing uh, evil and wicked and supporting maliciousness which is truly, you know, Satan getting his way out there if we don't stop this kind of talk from happening, whether it's kind of this gray level gossiping or full blown gossiping. God, be with us in our hearts so that our words and deeds glorify you. I pray all this in your son's name. Amen.